this constant story that we tell ourselves is the harder I work, the more I'll achieve. The feminine teaches us that the less we work, the more we be, the more we attract miracles into our life. Can I accept abundance for my being, not for my doing? I don't believe that people are tuning in and listening to this podcast because of what you've achieved. Or because of how much work I put in no. to sit here today? I don't think so. What? If this is how I'm gonna feel when I achieve my goals, I don't know if it's worth it. All I know is achieving results one way. I'm not a brand. I'm not a business. I'm a f-ing human being. Mm. I need to listen to myself. That's how we really grow our businesses. Mel, welcome to Powerhouse Women. Thank you. I'm so delighted to be here. I feel like this is one of the quickest friendship manifestations that I've ever had because (laughs) I shared with you when we met officially in person at the live podcast last night, I had just signed up for a free challenge that you're doing, Mm -hmm. not knowing you lived here in Austin where we are recording in person. And then I had an extra spot to fill. And I, in my heart, I was like, you know who I would love to connect with is Mel. And my business partner was actually like, I think she sent me, unbeknownst to me, sent me your profile and said, you should connect with this woman. I follow her. I love her stuff. I signed up for her free challenge. So all of my friends are in this challenge that you're starting. And what I realized is that there's such a need, a craving for the conversation that you are having, Mm. especially in my world and in, in my life personally. So here you are, days later. Yes, you manifested it. You made it happen. I'm so grateful that you said yes, because I am in a season of really coming to terms with how much I unknowingly have been operating in a way that is not my natural design. Mm. So I want you to start with even just unpacking for us the difference between these energies that we hear of masculine feminine but what i want you to focus on is why is specifically the polarity piece Mm -hmm. so important for our relationships and then we're going to unpack why it's important for us as women yeah well first of all i just want to speak to what you have been going through is something that we are all going through as a culture really as a generation right now yes Yes. That makes me actually, it should make me feel better. (laughs) Good. Yeah. Yeah. It's, and this is why I'm so passionate about this work and this message, because it is something that I, it's something that we're all going through and we're all navigating. And that is, we have been raised in a masculine world, in a working world that has taught us, if you want to be successful in this world, then you have to tap into your masculine energy because Mm -hmm. that's what we celebrate. And that's what we deem as successful, Mm -hmm. right? Which is achievement, accomplishment, hitting those goals, getting those titles, making that money, productivity. And the more feminine traits we have not respected as much. We have not held us in high esteem. Think about how looked down upon a stay-at-home mom is Mm -hmm. compared to a woman who's in the boardroom and a managing director of a company or CEO, right? We have celebrated the masculine and we have diminished the feminine. And what's happening now is, you know, our generation has really been raised to never need a man, to be very independent, to be a girl boss, to smash those goals, to be our own provider. And there's nothing wrong with that. In fact, it's very beautiful. And a lot of us have developed this not just because of the culture that we're in, but because we have been let down by men along the way. We have been let down by the masculine. We have learned, I can't trust the masculine to provide this safety Mm -hmm. for me. I'm gonna do it myself. And what we do in doing that, unfortunately, the issue that we're now having is underneath every powerhouse woman, I believe, is a deep desire to connect with her softness, a deep desire to surrender into her femininity. And we've created a world in our own world in which we don't know how to access that anymore because we've buried it so long ago, right? And the issue that comes up is in relationships. If we want to be with a man who's in his masculinity, then we have to and get to be in our femininity, right? And so, you know, it goes without saying, everyone knows this, we all have both masculine and feminine. This is not about women should be this, men should be this. 
this is just how polarity works. It's about magnetism, right? Mm -hmm. The masculine is attracted to the feminine. The feminine is not attracted to the feminine. The masculine is not attracted to the masculine, right? So when we show up in a relationship. This is not just in male-female relationships. Oh, definitely not. So I feel no. like it's even no. important to like set that context. Yeah, but exactly. It's the it's the inherent energy. I want you to continue yeah. talking about that side yeah. of things. Whether you are in a same sex relationship, right. whether you are in a um, different sex relationship, one partner holds the masculine, one partner holds the feminine. And in doing so, they create magnetism, they create polarity, they create sexual attraction, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? When a woman is very used to being in her masculine all the time at work, and she brings that same energy into her love life, her love life is not going to be as successful as it is when she applies that to her business, mm. right? And so we quickly learn, I have to learn a whole different way of being in my romantic life Right. And so now there's this conversation of how do I get into my feminine when I'm in my masculine all day at work? And what I found where I really feel like my work comes in is I help women be in their feminine more in their work so that it doesn't feel like such a big dramatic shift that I've got to make. It feels like my feminine energy supports me in my leadership and in my love because the two worlds are so deeply connected. Right. If our personal life is up the wall, then we can't show up in our business in the same way. Mm -hmm. And if we're, if things are going upside down in our business, then it impacts our relationship, it imp impacts our personal life. So it's all connected. Mm. And that's, I feel like the journey that I'm on, it started, I would even say two years ago, I started to just feel this inner knowing, this inner call to soften, to <laughs> slow down. And it felt really confronting mm -hmm. because all I know is achieving results one way. And I'm still very much undoing, untangling my worth with how hard I'm working or can I accept abundance for my being, not for my doing? Mm -hmm. Well, guess what? You already are, right? Yeah. You already are. Yeah. Because everyone that listens to your podcast listens because of who you are and who you're being. So when I came to the live podcast last night, right, I felt your feminine superpowers, which mm. are your vulnerability, your embodiment, your ability to evolve, shapeshift, transform, alchemize pain to power. These are all the feminine gifts. I don't believe that people are tuning in and listening to this podcast because of what you've achieved. Or because of how much work I put in no. to, to sit here today? I don't think so. What? I don't think so, babe. I think it's your That's heart. I think it's who you are. That was one of the biggest shifts for me as well, was recognizing that my worthiness was not about my work. Mm -hmm. It was not about my accomplishments. It was actually about my heart. It was about who I was as a human being, how I was showing up for my friendships, how deeply I cared. And the more I allowed myself to see, that's my strength, that's my superpower. It's not what's in my bio. <laughs> it's not all the things that I've been featured in. And I stopped leading with that. Right. I stopped leading with here are all the things that I've done because I recognize that's not actually my worth. Mm -hmm. That was such a beautiful reflection back to me. So thank you. Thank you for that. Thank you for seeing that, because I do believe I think you're right. I actually think the community all along has been telling me it either directly or indirectly that that is that's mm -hmm. that is what powerhouse women is. And I was the one having trouble accepting that more impact can come without it looking like the way that I thought I was impacting people. Yeah. And it's been, I'm just, I'm, I'm sharing this for anyone who's listening to this, who can't even fathom wrapping their minds around this conversation of softening. Mm -hmm. because, because it's the world that we live in yeah. doesn't allow us to, we've got to be on all the mm -hmm. time, we've got to be go, we've got to be, as soon as we've achieved one goal, we're on to the next. Mm -hmm. And, you know, for me, when I had this, this deep call to soften and really allow myself to rest and surrender, I was in the busiest season of my work life. I was doing a book launch followed by a live event in London. And by the time I had finished both of those launches, I basically felt like I was on the verge of collapsing. And like mm -hmm. I had to peel myself off the floor. And I remember like I had done this live event, I had done this book. And back then I was teaching around um, intuitive eating 
and like helping women um, heal from eating disorders, which is another version of connecting with the feminine Mm -hmm. too and coming out of that controlling mindset around food Mm -hmm. and into intuition. But in my business, I was um, running myself into the ground and I hit this goal. And I remember I had my biggest financial month that month from this big ripple effect of the book and the event. And it was like a 50K month. Mm -hmm. And I remember I felt nothing. And I just went, and I did a a TED talk that month as well, felt nothing. I just instantly Mm. went tick next. Okay, now I'm aiming for a hundred K month. Okay, now now I wanna speak at this thing. And I remember catching myself and being like, if this is the way that I'm gonna like build my business, if this is how I'm gonna feel, when I achieve my goals, I don't know if it's worth it. Yeah. And I don't know if the the person that I'm being in this pursuit of my goals is actually who I truthfully am. And so I started listening to that call, listening to that call to soften. Mm. And it started for me, the very first thing was, okay, what do I just really not like doing every day in my business? And I just stopped doing it. I just stopped doing it. I delegated it or I just completely shut it down Mm -hmm. and I just let the balls drop. Mm. How did that feel in that moment? Like a relief, like I was rebelling against the system. Yes. And I remember I I came offline for like a month Mm. and I was like, this feels like I'm gonna lose everything, but I'm so, I'm so here for it because I'm finding myself and I'm remembering I'm not a brand. I'm not a business, I'm a fucking human being. Mm -hmm. And like, I need to listen to myself, Mm -hmm. right? And so the more I was able to do that, the more the different layers of the feminine started opening up the womb, the sexuality, Mm -hmm. like the creativity starts coming back online because you say, I'm not gonna be on this treadmill. I need to take myself off and I can allow things to be easier. You know, one of the things that I think is this constant story that we tell ourselves is the harder I work the more I'll achieve and the feminine teaches us that the less we work the more we be the more we attract miracles into our life the more we magnetize abundance in yeah right instead of like going out to hustle and make it happen Mm -hmm. it's like no actually when I can be in my queen energy when I can set the boundaries when I can charge what I'm worth I can earn more while I do less yes So for me, it's been a process that's taking longer to go from one extreme Mm -hmm. into what I'm very much craving. Mm -hmm. It's been a process. First, it was starting to say no, starting to take offers that were profitable, that just didn't feel aligned. It was very much me showing up and feeling like I have to give people all this strategy in order to make money and impact them. Starting to say no and saying, I'm going to trust that if we remove this Mm -hmm. from our balance sheet, we're going to be okay. Mm -hmm. Then getting radical and taking another offer off of our plate this year. I'm still holding on to a lot of the old operating that I think even the vulnerability you saw last night is finally getting to a breaking point of being like, I'm just taking my hands off of it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm taking my hands off of the old way I used to earn money. And it takes this point. Here's, I guess what I would love for you to speak to is that journey because I I don't think there was a version of it that could have just been a a switch that was flipped I think I had to release it in a feminine way which wasn't just well tell me now how to be in my feminine and I'm just going to do that Mm -hmm. because isn't that kind of that's what everyone wants masculine that's what everyone wants can I tell you if I actually opened up right now my google search there's actually like a google search history of like what is feminine energy how do Mm -hmm. I because I was looking for the checklist Yeah, yeah, and that's where everyone begins. Tell me what to do so I can add this to my list of achievements. Mm -hmm. So I can add this to the list of things that I can nail. Mm -hmm. And actually the feminine calls us from deep within and it's actually not about doing more, it's actually about doing less. Yeah. And about being and remembering the truth of who you really are and your feminine magic, Mm -hmm. right? And so a lot of it looks like unraveling and unwinding from all the masculine conditioning and deciding to say no. And this is why a lot of people actually truly feel that feminine yearning when they are overdoing, when they are burning out. And then they start to feel that craving and it's only from listening to that Mm -hmm. and releasing Mm -hmm. and shedding 
that they actually go, ah, oh, here I am, I'm home, mm-hmm. this feels like me. So one of the reasons I've been just devouring your content truly in the last few weeks is because I feel like what I'm realizing is that so much of in this current season, what has, if I were to put a word to it, where I've been suffering, that's a little dramatic, but where Mm -hmm. I've been unhappy, where I've found myself frustrated, where I've found myself in any emotional state that I I just am realizing, like this is just off from my true nature of how Mm -hmm. I, I want to be operating. It actually tied back to this conversation of the energy I'm showing up with. And what was really helpful for me Mm -hmm. was hearing you break down the different archetypes Mm -hmm. because it gave something tangible to both the shadow, but also the power in all of these different feminine archetypes. So can you, can you go through those? Yeah, I would would love love to. Yeah. And this for me was such a powerful tool because as a woman who was very in her masculine and had a lot of resistance to the word feminine or feminine energy, it felt like Mm -hmm. foreign. It felt like words that would come up for me were like weak, soft, passive. When I started learning about the archetypes, I realized, oh, there's many different ways to be feminine. And there's many different ways to be in our healthy feminine versus our unhealthy feminine. And so the seven feminine archetypes that I love to teach and love to work with are the maiden, which is like the princess, the daughter, the curious, playful, youthful, innocent in all of us, hungry to learn, curious, you know, wants to be chosen, wants to be taken on a journey, taken on an adventure. The maiden is just open-eyed at the world. The shadow of the maiden can be the damsel in distress, right? Which is why me? It can be like a victim consciousness. Why me? Why is this happening to me? Why isn't someone choosing me? When is someone, something gonna change this and make it better for me? Mm-hmm. So when we see people operating in that, that victim consciousness, it's like a shadow of the maiden archetype or like that damsel in distress of like waiting for the prince to come mm-hmm. and save us, right? Every, like Cinderella. Every rom-com, every Disney movie exactly, ever made. right? So yes, this yeah. one's gonna show up for a lot of women. The next one is the mother, mother archetype. So the mother archetype is one of the most powerful feminine archetypes. She's the nurturer. She's the caretaker. She represents unconditional love. She represents mother nature, the great mother earth. She is just always knows what you need, able to take care of everyone around her. The shadow of the mother's of the mother archetype is the martyr, which is overgiving, Mm -hmm. feeling underappreciated resenting how much she gives. And then another shadow of the mother can be the manager, micromanaging because of how, how deeply she cares. And that can come across as controlling, smothering, helicopter mother. And this can show up in our business with the way that we take care of our clients, for example, the way we take care of our team is like overdoing. And when, we, when we're in that shadow of the mother archetype in our business, for example, it means that our clients become dependent on us because when we show up as the mother, they show up as a child. Yeah. It's the same thing in romantic relationships, right? Mm. We show up as the mother to our husband. And then we wonder why are they not showing up in their king energy? Well, it's because you're not showing up in your queen. You're showing up as your mother, which means they're behaving more like a child. So the mother archetype is a really powerful one. And mm-hmm. the shadow of the mother can, can be a really, really powerful one to recognize and start to work with. Next archetype is the wild woman. So the wild woman is the free spirit, the healer, the mystic, the woman who just rebels against the rules, dances to the beat of her own drum, makes things up as she goes along. She can also be a bit of a lone wolf. In business, this can show up as like digital nomad, flying around the world, doing things on her own time. Like it's, it's wild, it's free. Um, and it's all, it's, it can also be like non-committal. It can be very ungrounded at time, it can be This archetype can sometimes, uh, in the shadow of this archetype, you can struggle to see things through because you change your mind with the wind, right? You're just like, I wanna do this, now I wanna do this, now I wanna do this, right? So that can be the wild woman. Next is the lover archetype. So the lover archetype is like the goddess Aphrodite. She is sensual, she is driven by pleasure, desire. She does things because she wants to, not because she has to. She doesn't care about showing up to work because this is the time she's meant to be at work, right? She's like, I am gonna pleasure myself and I'm gonna have a massage and then I'll 
go get my nails done and then I'll write a piece of content yes. when I want to yes. do it, right? Yes. It's like, I will do things that feel pleasurable and this lover archetype is very magnetic in relationships, right? Because the lover is this beautiful invitation for pleasure and desire and sensuality, right? It's very magnetic. So the lover archetype is really powerful for business and for love. But people are not using it in business as much as they could be, right? Because this is like a feminine superpower of magnetism, magnetizing clients in instead of hunting them down and going out and getting them. Okay, so right? without taking us too off track, because yeah. the, the other archetypes are so powerful, how do we tap into that in business? So let's say you're wanting to like bring in more clients, right? And you have two people, or let's say one person that has reached out or that you feel like is a, a good fit for one-on-one -on -one, or has been in your world in the past, whatever. So the masculine way of kind of engaging that person and getting them into your world would be like, DM them, send them a DM, follow up. Hi, how's it going? You know, have you thought any more about our work together? Here's how I can support you. Here's how I can serve, serve you. What do you think? The more lover archetype way would be to put the energy back on you, take the laser focus energy off that client, be completely unattached to that client and what they do, put the energy back on you and be like, okay, what, like, what do I love about the work that I'm doing with my clients right now? Mm -hmm. Okay, I am gonna just be in that energy and I'm gonna create from that space. I'm gonna be the honeypot and I'm gonna allow the bees to come to me instead of go out to them. So how this might look would be like, okay, when I, when I think about that client, what is it, how does it make me feel? Oh, it makes me think about like, oh, like I really feel like I would love to do this kind of work with her. Okay, I'm gonna just create a piece of content about that, right? What happens then? The client sees that piece of content and goes, oh my gosh, she's speaking directly to me. Then she reaches out to you. So brilliant. It's so brilliant. It's just a simple shift mm -hmm. of not putting the focus on them, bringing it back to you, mm -hmm. being in your world, being in your magnetism. This works in dating really well, mm -hmm. right? So my single clients, you know, I always say to them, like, instead of laser focusing on one man that you like really want to convert <laughs> into get your man, that's the wrong energy, right? He can feel that. Put the focus back on you. Mm -hmm how deeply in love with yourself and your life you are, he's going to feel that. Yes. And isn't that so true? I, I find myself even the other women that I'm attracted, magnetized to their energy, the work they're doing, I just love their content, mm -hmm. are the ones, if I really unpack it, that are at least coming across to me in that energy. And yeah. it is. Yeah. It's it's inspiring, it's beautiful, it makes me wanna work with those people. Right, and so many women in business think the way that I can grow my business is by promising a result. I have to be transactional. You pay me this, I will give you this. Tangible, practical, step-by-step -step systems. This is what we've been taught that people want. But actually, when we think about the people that we love to follow, it's actually about their embodiment. It's about who they are. And this is, again, this is a feminine superpower that we can tap into as business owners. So yes, results, yes, promises, yes, solutions, but also experience, community, heart, embodiment, your storytelling, mm. the way that you share yourself is the way that you make people feel. That's how we really grow our businesses. I feel like I'm just going to use the word honeypot a lot more often yes. as well now. Be the honeypot. So the maiden, yes. the mother, yes, the lover, and the wild one? woman. The wild woman. Next, we have the wise woman that's also known as the crone or the teacher, the teacher archetype. So the wise woman is like the grandmother, the mentor, the the house of uh, the voice of intuition, wisdom. This is the archetype that you tap into when you are sharing your experiences when you are passing down wisdom. So that is the wise woman. The shadow of the wise woman can be the hermit, right? Just want to shut myself away from the world. Don't want to go out and socialize. Just want to be in the books and be in the learnings, right? Be in the constant evolution and growth. So that's the wise woman. The next is the huntress. So the huntress archetype, I always think of like Wonder Woman, Lara Croft, Tomb Raider, Katniss right? Katniss Everdeen. Katniss Everdeen, yes. exactly, like warrioress, mm. right? Like I've got my armor on, I'm ready to go, 
right? You tell me where to go. I'm going to make it happen. You tell me like, this is the goal. This is the mission, like very mission driven, which mm. is I imagine what a lot of, a lot of listeners are resonating with the huntress archetype. Mm-hmm. The huntress archetype is a natural born leader, natural mm-hmm. born leader, natural activist, stands up for what she believes in, goes first and really independent. And what she struggles with is receiving receiving support. Um, She can struggle with making relationships with other women. She can struggle with softening because she has learned that her strength is in that armor, is in that armoring up and just going and getting it done. So the shadow of the huntress is the hustler, right? When we, when we hustle too hard, we burn out, right? And when you bring that huntress energy to your work, you can get shit done. You can achieve a lot. When you bring it to your romantic relationships, <laughs> it can be problematic <laughs> because your partner doesn't want to be treated like a project or like a mission. Or like prey, I guess. Right, or also like prey. Huntress. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And like, you know, we have to remember that the, the, the masculine in our men, like our men have a primal need to hunt. Mm-hmm. They want to be the hunters, Mm -hmm. right? So when we are doing all the hunting, when we are in our huntress energy all the time, it starts for them, it starts to feel like, what's my purpose here? Mm. Like, what's my place here? Where do I fit in here? So the huntress one can be, can cause pain in relationships Mm -hmm. if we don't start to balance these out with the others, Mm -hmm. right? And then finally the queen. So the queen archetype, love this archetype for, for a lot of the work that I do because it's a woman who has stepped into her power, her worthiness. It's a woman who has boundaries in place and still is able to lead from her softness, from her heart. So the heart-centered queen, queen of hearts. And then the shadow of the queen is the tyrant or the diva. So it's like entitlement, do as I say, I'm the boss. And so we've seen this queen archetype in different movies that we've grown up with as well, which is like the ice queen, the evil queen, the the queen who is like off with their heads, vengeful, yes, jealous. Yes. Right? The actual queen of hearts. But yeah, we're, re- <laughs> we're reclaiming yeah. that. <laughs> she probably just has a wound, right? <laughs> totally. That's what it is. Yeah. So, I, I mean, I would love to bring you back, do a part two, deep diving into the relationship component of this because yeah. – I think that's actually the next frontier as I as I'm able to bring this into my business more and more. Just mm-hmm. how powerful it's going to be for my relationship. I've been married 13 years and oh gosh, she's just an incredible man and just even seeing how the in little ways as because I've been so ambitious in my business and I've I've just I love that part of me. I love that ambitious part of me. What I love about the archetypes is it's not telling me that that part has to sit down and I and there's mm-hmm. no hun- there's no room for the huntress. Mm-hmm. So if people are listening to this and maybe there is one archetype that really stood out and they realize that they're in more of the shadow element of it, how do we start to work within the archetypes to to find the power mm-hmm. to bring these visions that we've been gifted into reality because I yeah. do I feel so clearly there is there is an uprising mm-hmm. so many women that I know are saying things like I just want to burn it all down I want to start over but I think what we're really craving mm. is we're, we're craving a different way of operating yes and yeah. I really just I want this platform to be a space where we start to invite women in to these conversations because I think this is it. This is what we're all craving and we didn't even know it. Yeah, totally. And it's such important work for anyone who is single and wants to call in a man or anyone who's in a long-term relationship and wants to be more in her feminine. Right? Yeah. Because there is this, for someone who is a leader and has been doing things in a certain way and it has been very ambitious, like we don't want to lose that aspect of mm-hmm. ourselves, right? Mm-hmm. And my partner loves it. Oh, of course, Love, right. Of course. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. extremely attractive. Mm-hmm. And there's nothing more attractive to him, I bet, than when you're in your softness as mm-hmm. well, because mm-hmm. then he can take care of you, right? Instead of you taking care of everything. So when you start to recognize, okay, I think I'm in the shadow of this archetype. For example, let's take the mother, right? So the shadow of the mother can be like micromanaging, controlling, mothering, right? And so we start to recognize, okay, if I'm in the shadow, the good news is that means I have a a lot of this one archetype, right? So 
if I have a lot of mother archetype, that means that I am a natural nurturer. That means yeah. I'm a natural caregiver. Yeah. So like re- remembering like there is beauty in this, mm. right? And then can I catch myself when I actually start to exhibit the more unhealthy behaviors, right? And when we have one archetype that's very, very dominant for us, there's often another archetype that's very distant to us, that feels very foreign to us. And so when we do this archetype work and we have these conversations, this is not about changing. This is not about picking one and being like, okay, I just wanna be in the queen all the time, right? This is like, okay, which one feels the most distant? Which even feels triggering? And why is that? And which archetype is kind of is kind of calling for me mm-hmm. to come forward? Mm. So like we see a lot of maidens, a lot of mothers, but our culture has been very afraid of the wild woman in women and the lover in women. So often I see the wild woman and the lover are the ones that feel distant for women or triggering and they don't know how to access them mm. and so getting curious around okay what does it look like to bring the lover archetype forward okay that looks like prioritizing play and pleasure rest mm-hmm. that looks like kind of putting down the to-do list and actually thinking about like what would bring me like a ton of pleasure today and actually like that's the most productive thing you can do that's letting your lover archetype lead Mm. right so that's just like one example so for people who want to dive deeper as we you know we start a new year and they're realizing that something is just ready to shift Mm -hmm. talk a little bit about where people can connect with you the resources available Mm -hmm. and then also will you come back for a part two so we can dive (laughs) deep into the relationship aspect as well yes or no okay 100 recorded here (laughs) when we connect with you come on instagram i am mel wells And um, in terms of the new year, you know, one way that you can just really start to tap into your feminine energy as you think about your goals for the new year is instead of thinking about what are the things that I want to do, think about like, who is the woman that I want to be? What are the qualities that I want to embody in this year? Right? Because that's what it's all about. Mm -hmm. Something I love to end all of our episodes with and and I think this is just I'm really excited to hear as you're in this you're in your very much in your mother very much in your lover era mm-hmm. as you were sharing earlier uh it's just a question that's an invitation to reflect and acknowledge yourself for something that you just want to acknowledge yourself for today big or small we just call it a powerhouse moment what's a recent powerhouse moment that you want to celebrate right now what's just the first thing that pops into mind Hmm. You know, this is very in alignment with the conversation that we've just had. So to me, when I think powerhouse moment, I think of feminine power. And when I think about my personal journey with feminine power, a lot of my lessons have been in like trusting and allowing a man to lead instead of needing to lead. And so Yesterday, my partner made a big decision for the family without me being there. And in a previous version of me would have been like, how could you not wait for me? How could you do this? We need to reverse this decision Mm -hmm. because I wasn't here and I actually would rather we do it in a different way. And instead I was like, this is a gift. And he's, this is, this was such a good move. Even if I wouldn't have done it in that same way. Mm. And I was able to just receive that and be like, thank you. And that for me has felt like a powerhouse move just in the last 24 hours. That's so beautiful. Yeah. This conversation felt like a soul hug. So thank you so much for being here. Thank you.